Hello, game traders, and welcome out. This is Sonket from Maverick Currencies, and I'm back with another educational piece here. And in this video, we'll be discussing how to pick your trading time frame. This is, again, the most commonly asked question I get from time to time. So in this video, what we will do is we'll talk about different matrix that we can use in order to make a decision. As we discussed in our last video, we talked about ATR. So ATR is what we use in order to measure volatility in the currency market. So there's a couple of questions that we need to take into consideration when we're picking our time frame. The first question to ask yourself is how long I want to hold this trade for. But the second question is what's the volatility like? Because this this will make it much easier for you to kind of focus on exact time frame. So as you can see, I'm just going to use this time frame right now on let's say a Kiwi CAD. <clears throat> so if we take a look at this pair, uh, let's just start with a daily chart. So we'll always use a top down analysis so we can make that determination. So what we see in the ATR, if we look at the ATR, we see that this is in a falling volatility environment. So this is not as volatile uh, if you're looking for a quick play. This is just stagnating. This is uh, moving very slowly. So in, in this way, you can see that if I go on a shorter term time frame, what we are getting is a lot of noise, a lot of noise, but it's not a big percentage move. So percentage move is very small. I mean, if you look at this range here, this is moving between 20 to 30 pips. Not a big range. I mean, especially if you're going with the risk of a 20, 30 pips, you know, you're not getting a good risk to reward ratio, but it's moving in a very, very constrained way. So it's in this, uh, in this situation, you can see that as I increase the time frame, price action gets to uh, a bit more clear. I mean, you can see this is a big consolidation uh, range here. You know, of course, if it breaks a certain level, I want to be short. But notice that it's making it much easier when I look at this you know, in a falling volatility environment. It's better to be trading on higher time frame. If you're trading on a higher time frame, you get to cut out this noise that, that you're, you're kind of facing um, when you're trading a shorter term time frame. So on the other hand, when would I like to trade on a shorter term time frame? Well, in many cases, we look at volatility. When, when there's an increase in volatility, that's really where you want to be trading a shorter term time frame. Because if you go on a higher time frame, you know, the, 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 the range will be so wide that you, your stop loss will be so far apart and it just makes it very difficult. You know, a good example of that is 2020, you know, when we had the whole COVID situation and suddenly there was a big movements were taking place. You know, if you look at these moments and you look at these stop losses you have in these candles, I mean, these are two to 300 pip candle. So when you're looking at 300 pip candle, you know, if, and if I'm really using those candlesticks as my stop loss, I'm using, a, let's say, a one-to-one -one risk reward. I need to make 600 pips in order to break even uh, or, you know, to have one-to-one -one risk reward. Again, these are wide ranges. So whenever I see those wide body ranges, you know, that's where I would like to go on a shorter term time frame, especially when the volatility is increased. You know, the, the markets are more on day-to-day -day basis and it's, it gets it difficult to hold something on a higher time frame. But... On a shorter term time frame, you get some amazing opportunities. So as you go into these these ranges, you notice that when the ranges get really, really small, you know, that means that I'm not really getting a big uh, percentage change on a day to day basis. So I can't really use the day, use a 15 minute chart to get in and out because I'm not really seeing a big movement. I'm just seeing an Aussie dollar an example right now. And let's use Aussie dollar as an example here. And you can see that for the last couple of um, last couple of hours or a couple of, last couple of days. I mean, look at the volatility. Volatility is very uh, constrained. Let's go on a daily time frame. You'll see the volatility there. So on a daily time frame, you can see on the daily range. Look at the we are in a falling volatility for the last few days. So as the move is going higher, we are getting a lower volatility. So. Uh, we have a direction, but with low volatility. Again, that's a, a indication that I need to be going on a higher time frame in order to capture that move. And you can see on a higher time frame, it looks a little bit better. Uh, we have some, some this this range here, and it's moving in an orderly fashion. But it, as I go a shorter term, let's say hourly chart, you know, we are kind of stagnating here. But let's say go on a 15 minute chart. What you're getting is a whole lot of noise. Not a good percentage move, but a whole lot of noise. 
So the daily chart, again, as you look at it, it, it kind of tells you how much things are moving on a day to day basis. When you are in a, a rising ATR environment, like where we are here back in May last year, and then back in October to November. I mean, so if you look at the candlesticks here, these candlesticks percentage move, which a lot, which were a lot more higher. You know, we are getting these body candles. I mean, if you take a look at the ranges on those, these are nice one to two percent candles. And again, these are good environment. Even though if I jump in short term, there's good opportunities to be had and you can get in and get in out. Uh, but if you're holding it a little bit longer, um, you realize that this is where you might get a little bit more chop, like a lot more ranges to deal with. So in this case, the high of this candle, this range here is 65. But the low of this is 63. That's a 200 pip. So a lot of times it's hard to sit through those. And then again, the the higher the 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 amount that your 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 stop loss is, it really decreasing your position size. So a lot of times it just doesn't even make worth it to kind of put a trade on um, for for those kind of uh, ranges. But as you can as you can see, when you are in this environment, I'm doing the opposite. I'm going on a shorter term, uh, on a higher time frame in order to capture that move because shorter term, it's just going to give you a lot more reasons to jump in and jump out. But you can see there's a lot of reasons here to, to kind of get excited for both ways, but it's not really going anywhere. So I always uh, recommend that use the, uh, use the analogy of higher time frame, lower volatility and higher volatility that goes into a lower time frame. So, at the end, you also need to decide, okay, how long I want to hold a trade for, depending on your schedule. If you find an environment, let's say you like to trade on a higher time frame, but you're getting a lot of volatility, you know, that's the time to maybe sit out. On the other hand, if you're, if you're trading on a shorter term volatility and you are now you're experiencing low volatility and you don't really want to trade on a higher time frame, then that's the reason to sit out. So this, these, these are the two ways you can really uh, decide when to be active and when not to be active. Every trader does uh, well in different environments. Some traders do well in higher volatility. Some traders do well in lower volatility. So uh, use volatility as a decision-making tool uh, in order to decide the time frame to pick. And based on that, you can decide how active you want to be and how many positions you want to be taking in a, in a, in a, uh, a week to week basis. As you can see, lower volatility, I'm getting less signals. So clearly my activity is a lot more uh, on the downside. Now, if the activity, if the volatility is higher, of course, that's giving more signals. I want to be more active. Uh, so if you are trading a lot in a low volatility environment, realize that that is just a recipe for disaster. You're just going to jump in and out in a bunch of trades and not really get anything. Uh, so use that and make sure you stay consistent with it. Thanks for joining. We'll see you in the next class.